So I'm Dr. Debbie Silver. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Her Story TV and the Her Story podcast. This is Gertrude Macha here in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand. I am graced with the presence of yet another fascinating lady coming to me all the way from the US. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our tribe. Oh, thank you so much. So looking forward to our conversation. So tell everybody your full name, where you're based, how old you are, and share your story with us today. Sure. So I'm Dr. Debbie Silber. I'm based in New York and San Diego. I bounce back and forth between the two. And, uh, and, and I am just, I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity just to serve. My topic is betrayal, how to heal, what it causes, everything it does, and how to make it the best thing that could have happened to you. Wow. So this sounds like it came from a personal experience. Am I correct? You know, I, you don't study something like betrayal because you want to. <laughs> it's it's my 30th year in business. Uh, oh, you asked how old I was. I'm 55. So I've been in health mindset, personal development forever. And um, I had a horrible betrayal from my family. Thought I did everything I needed to do to heal. And a few years later, it was my husband. And I was shocked and devastated and blindsided like anybody else who's been through it. So I got him out of the house and I was like, okay, I have four kids, six dogs, a thriving business. No, it's about me now. Because, because I looked at those two situations and I said, what's common to those? I was never, it was never about me. My boundaries were getting crossed. And I was like, something has to change and that's me. So I dove into this PhD program. I enrolled at 50 uh, in transpersonal psychology, the psychology of transformation and human potential. And because I was changing so much, I didn't quite understand it. He was too on his own, wasn't ready to look at that. Uh, and then while I was there, I did a study. I studied betrayal. What holds us back? What helps us heal? And what happens to us physically, mentally, and emotionally when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive? That study led to three groundbreaking discoveries, which changed my business, my family, my health, my life. Wow. 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 And it sounds to me like just based on this experience, you've kind of created some kind of a methodology, a process that can actually help somebody in a situation like this, correct? Oh, absolutely. One of the discoveries was while we can stay stuck for years, decades, a lifetime, and so many of us do, if we're going to fully heal, we'll move through what we now know as five proven predictable stages. And what's even more exciting about that, we know now what happens physically, mentally, and emotionally at every one of those stages. And we know what it takes to move from one stage to the next. Why is that good? Because, because now healing from betrayal has a roadmap. Wow. Wow. Now, where is the point where most people get stuck? You know, when I went through my divorce after 27 years of marriage, I was lost. I didn't know who I was anymore. Yeah. And I remember telling myself, I don't want to get stuck. I want to move on with my life. I'm going to find my next husband quick, fast and easy because I love being married. I loved having family around me. And a lot of people were surprised at how fast I recovered, but I managed to do that because I have a lot of friends who are still in situations like that where they just haven't been able to move on. So mm -hmm. what are your findings? Yeah, well, it, it takes, it, what I found is one of the biggest needle movers that move us through the stages really isn't about how the, like severe the, the crisis was. It had to do with resistance. So much of it had to do with resistance and willingness to move forward. For example, the, you know, if you're numbing, avoiding, distracting because it's painful to feel and face, you'll stay stuck. Right. As opposed to someone who says, I'm just going to put my head down and not lift my head up until I am through this. But but the most common out of all the five stages, and I talk about it in trust again, but the most common is to get stuck in stage three, because in stage two, that's the shock. That's the trauma. That's D-Day Discovery Day. But once you've figured out how to survive because it feels so much better than the shock and trauma of where you just came from, you think it's good. So we start planting roots here and a few things happen. We get our story. 
You know, we get, we get all those small self benefits. Like we get to be right. We get someone to blame. We get a target for our anger. We don't have to do the hard work of learning to trust again. Should I trust you? Should I trust you? Forget it. I'm not trusting anybody. You know, we get, we get sympathy from everybody we tell our story to. Mm-hmm. So we plant roots there. And then what we're there. And then this starts happening. We start, our mindset starts changing and we're like, maybe I'm not all that great. Maybe it's me, right? And now we plant deeper roots. And now because like energy attracts like energy, we're calling situations and circumstances and people towards us that confirm that's where we belong. It gets worse, but I'll get you out of there. Because you don't like it here, but you have no idea there's a stage four and stage five waiting for you. You think this is it. Here, right here is when you start using food drugs, alcohol, work, TV, keeping busy, reckless behavior. So you do that for, because you, it, it's terrible, but you don't know it gets better. So you do that for a day, a week, a month. Now it's a habit, a year, 10, 20 years. And I can see someone 20 years out and say that emotional eating or that drinking or that, you know, that numbing in front of the TV. Do you think that has anything to do with your betrayal? They say, oh my gosh, that happened 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. But do you see, they were just stuck in a perpetual holding pattern that whole time. Wow. That is just incredible. And a lot of people are doing this totally unconsciously. They're not even aware of where they're at in life at that moment in time. So you've created this process. You're helping people get unstuck. I really love this. If you were to go back to the younger you, Mm. that woman who experienced betrayal is stuck, is hurt, doesn't see where they're going, can't see the wood from the trees. What three nuggets of wisdom would you have said to her at that point in time? Yeah. Oh, you know, I, there wasn't a roadmap before it was discovered. So um, that version of me was just so determined to heal. And I said, if I can heal from this, I'm taking everybody with me. So I would just reassure that version of me or anybody going through it. Uh, You're not crazy. You're not alone. You can heal from all of it. That's the most important thing. I would also, I would also tell that version of me and anybody else who's going through it. Even if you have to say this to yourself a hundred million times, it's worth it. Even though it was done to you, it's not about you. Mm. It's really not. And I would also say you have every right just to rebuild yourself and move and move on. Rebuilding is always a choice, whether we rebuild ourselves and move on. That's what I do with my family. Or if the situation lends itself, if you're willing, if you want to, you can rebuild an entirely new relationship with the person who hurt you. That's what I do with my husband. Not long ago, we married each other again. <laughs> oh, wow. Now that is a nice story. New wow. rings, new vows, new dress, and our four kids is our bridal party. Oh, I love that. I love that. And that's a very unusual thing because most people will have just taken each other to bits Mm -hmm. by the time they've gone through a challenging situation like that. I remember when I, um, when I left my husband, I said to him, you know what? It's time for us to part company before I start hating you. Yeah. And I felt that we were connected at the hip for the rest of our lives through our three beautiful children. And I wanted to be able to go to my daughter's wedding and stand next to my ex-husband and still be friends. And we succeeded in doing that in a very magical way. We're still good friends. I remarried. He's not married, but it's interesting that you've managed to do the same thing. And a lot of people fail to do that. Well, it's, it's so important because I guess in all of the studying that I did in all the studies and all the research and all the everything, it's such a different type of closure when you heal and move on like I did with my family but that healing and rebuilding you know when it comes to forgiveness and reconciliation and and my ego I mean (laughs) that was a big one to get through too there's a there's it's a different type of dynamic and I never would have done it if I wasn't completely different or for sure if he wasn't completely different but there's that death of the old Yes. Death of the old me, death of the old him, death of the old relationship in order to rebirth that new. And I think a lot of people are afraid of that because of the unknown. I was ready to be a single mom. That was the deal breaker. And, and oh. it's in that complete and utter destruction of the old. That the that's new where thing they has a chance to birth. Wonderful. So now let me teleport you into the future. 
if time was an illusion and your past, your present, your future existed in the same timeline and you could go between the three different times, mm -hmm. if you were to have a conversation with the future you at the age of 100 and you're sitting in your rocking chair and your grandchildren, great-grandchildren are in front of you, mm -hmm. and you could have a conversation with that woman based on how you've lived your life and how you're playing the life game right now, what would you say to her? Oh, you know what? I would, I would thank her for getting her ego out of the way, for being willing to be vulnerable, for being willing to share her story so she can impact millions of people. Um, that was one of the hardest things for me to do. I'm a private person and this is what gossip thrives on, mm -hmm. but it's helping so many people and it's so worth it. And I, uh, I would just appreciate the road she took. I love that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for gracing us with your presence today, sharing your nuggets of wisdom. I love the fact that you are really helping other women navigate these difficult emotional experiences that we have in life. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Like you can see, we have a breath of stories. Every single woman who stepped forward to share has got a piece to the puzzles of all of our lives. So thank you for tuning in today. Debbie, thank you again for this interview and have a fantastic day, everybody, wherever you are in the world. This is Gertrude Mache with the Her Stories podcast and the Her Story TV. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>